Hey, Bjorn Strong in the Arm here. Welcome back to RimWorld Science, where today we're looking at something that a number of people have expressed interest in, and I'm curious about it too, and that is sappers. How it is that sappers decide where they're going to come and attack your base and what you can do about it. As usual, I'll be dealing with the science of it, talking about how the mechanics work, how sappers decide where they're going to want to go, so you can come up with your own strategies based on the information. But at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and give Give one strategy that I think works pretty well in preparing for sappers in advance. But in order to understand how sappers work, we have to start out understanding how pathing works. So the purpose of a pathfinding algorithm in general is to find the cheapest route from one point to another. Now, very often the cheapest route will just be the shortest route, but not always. You see, if Griffiths here comes down here, the shortest route is straight, but he goes all the way around here. That's because these muddy bits here are more expensive. And so when the algorithm finds a cheap path, it doesn't go for the straight one, it goes around the expensive bits. Now the way sappers work in RimWorld is that the pathing algorithm for them is changed. So Griffiths here is never going to try to walk through a wall because a wall has for him an infinite cost effectively. But for a sapper, walls do not have infinite costs. They have much lower costs, so sappers can pass through them. And then when they get there, they'll dig through or start throwing grenades at it so they can get past. But sappers also will try to avoid your defenses. And that happens because certain of your defenses get counted as more expensive. So they make an effort to path around them, the same way that Griffiths here wants to path around the mud. So what we need to figure out is a couple of things. One, we need to figure out exactly what are the things that sappers are trying to avoid and how do they do that? But two, we have to figure out what exactly are they passing to in the first place? So we can get a bit of information on that question by coming down to the paths tool. So the path tool shows you what the game is thinking when it's calculating paths. So you see here, it's gone, it's evaluated a score for all of these and it's trying to find the shortest path. If we come over here and we call in a sapper and if we do a 95 point, we'll just get the sapper with nobody else coming around. And there he is and see where he's gonna go. He's pathing right over here to uh, this wall here, it looks like. And let's try someone else. He's coming over here, uh, also heading for, for this wall right here. And let's do one, one more. So it looks like what's going on is these guys are just picking some kind of random walls to come and visit or random structures. Yeah, he, yeah he's coming just right to there. Just picking some, some, some bits of construction that we've got in the base. But now let's try something else. Let's come to this unowned bed. Let's set it. So it's owned now by Griffins. Now let's get uh, three more of these guys in here. There they all are, all kind of scattered around. Actually, not too far from each other. And every single one of them is pathing right here to that bed. And in the testing I've done, that seems to be the way it goes. When there are owned beds, beds with owners, uh, the sappers will prioritize pathing to that. Uh, otherwise, they seem to pick a random kind of thing, the kind of thing a raider would pick to come and attack, like maybe your coolers, maybe your geothermal generator, maybe just these doors. They'll pick them and path towards that. So some structure inside your base. So that's what they're heading for. But what do they avoid? Well, we know that they don't like kill boxes, so it's a pretty good bet. They're going to want to stay away from turrets. So let's go ahead and just put some turrets around here, maybe like this. That looks pretty good. And you can see that the path here to the bed, these all go through turrets, this doesn't. So if they don't like turrets, we probably should expect they're gonna try to go around that guy right there. And now I turned off that rainbow algorithm because it doesn't actually show you what they will do, just what they're looking at and what they're aiming for. But let's check it out. Sure enough, he comes down. And he comes right up here, uh, aiming for a spot outside of the turrets range. Now another question is, suppose there are lots of turrets heading around, like there is no route uh, that's outside the turret range, but suppose one route has just a lot fewer turrets in it. So 
if we do it kind of like this and we look, you can see there's only with this route, only one turret you go through. This one has a whole bunch. So what happens if we call somebody in like this? And he's coming from a long way up there. His most direct route to the bed is going to be coming down like through here. But nope, sure enough, he's going to come all the way down and around. So even though there's a turret here, they want to avoid turrets. The more turret coverage there is, the more they want to avoid it. Now, one thing we should I want to stress here is that it's not where those circles are exactly. That's where this that's where the, the turrets kind of can range to, but it's actually where the turrets are able to hit. So suppose I come and kind of go like that. So all of these turrets above and below are going to be blocked off by this right here. Let's do the same thing right over here. And then let's see what happens when we call in a sapper. All right, he's coming up from the bottom. So he might, he might go for right there just because it's most direct. Nope, he's coming up over the side. So although there's lots of turret with circles there, since they're blocked by their heat counts these as uh, having no turret coverage at all, and he likes these squares a lot. They're really cheap, whereas these ones, and even these ones, are more expensive. Now we know that sappers are willing to go through walls, but we also know that they don't always go through walls. Sometimes they'll walk around a big chunk like this instead of going right through it. So it's worth wondering, can we make walls thick enough that will deter the sappers from going there and have them come to somewhere else? So here I've got these walls are all six thick, which is pretty incredibly thick. And at the bottom, it's only one thick. Let's go ahead and uh, get a, a sapper in here, see where he's going to go. All right, now what's he going to do? Is he going to come all the way down to avoid the walls? Let's find out. Nope, he is perfectly happy to just come right through uh, these six walls right here. All right, so here I've replaced the walls with a 21 by 21 rock tool. Coming all the way around and got a raid right over here. And now we'll see this guy is gonna go down and around. He, this 21 is just too much to go through. And I should mention, it, it's not because it's rock. I've done a test where I've had six rock around. They're happy to go right through the six but 21 is just too much. So if you are really willing to build a tremendous amount of walls, you can keep sappers away that way, but it seems like it's not gonna be a very practical solution given the width you have to get before it starts to really deter them. So we know sappers really want to avoid turrets and they have a slight preference for avoiding walls, but not enough to keep them from cutting through five of them. What about traps? So here we've got three sides surrounded by double layer of traps and none at all. We've got a raider out here over to the side. Let's see what he's going to do. He does not seem to care at all. He is going straight for the traps. Sure enough, there he goes. Uh, he's going to keep it up. Yeah, he's down. And we could do the exact same test with a row of bombs around here. So let's see what uh, this guy here is going to do. Yep, and he too makes no effort whatsoever to avoid the bombs. So it looks as though there's a big push for the sappers to avoid turrets. There's a tiny little push to avoid walls, just so they don't bulldoze through everything, I imagine. But they completely ignore traps and IEDs. So what can we do with this information? Well, one thing to note real quick is that the sappers seem to want to avoid the turret coverage area Basically, whether or not the turret is powered, having a turret powered or not doesn't make any difference. So what I like is putting a, a ring around your base of this kind of no man's land here that has turret coverage with unpowered turrets. So in this design for this base here, there are a total of uh, six turrets, not, ca not counting all the ones that are here plugged in and ready to go as part of the kill box. So at one side of the base are the kill box. At the other three sides, I've got these areas that are not covered by any turrets at all. But they are filled with this kind of little trap structure to trick people into getting in through traps. 
And then behind, there's this area for shooting. And so the idea is that uh, the sappers, when they come in, they're going to path down to one of these. Either the traps will kill the sapper off, and when the sapper dies, the rest of the raid will then come. They don't have a sapper through the walls, so they'll come into the kill box after all. And if it doesn't kill the sapper off, they're going to come through here. They're going to have a shootout then with people right here. So let's try this out, shall we? Let's go ahead and call in a raid of sappers. Um, 800 some points. That's a decent size raid to see how this looks. Now, where are they at? They're down in this corner. So they're going to probably come to one of these two. We'll have to wait till we get a little bit closer. So we, till we can see, we'll get our fighters kind of to here. So that once they get, I uh, don't know where they're going yet. <laughs> All right, they're heading up that way. All right, so now we'll get our people in position. And uh, soon they're going to be here. Now, when if the sapper dies, then they're going to all come up here. Otherwise, we'll have to fight them kind of on their own turf. But so notice, yeah, as soon as he gets hurt on a trap, he stops and wanders around. That's actually a really helpful thing because he can, maybe he'll path back, maybe he'll path over this one next and like take more damage than if he just kind of path straight through. So let's see how this goes. More damage, liking the way this is going. All right, now he's to there. Probably next time he's gonna have a clear path and kind of start shooting unless we get really lucky. So probably gonna fight him off over here. Yeah, there he is. So he's gonna start Throwing bombs. He's throwing them right here. I suspect he's aiming for more like here. And, uh, again, but one nice thing is about this is that even when they have it, like, got it destroyed, people are still taking damage on these traps, wandering around. Someone's already died. We don't have to worry about, uh, where's our sapper? He's over here now. All right. And now he's hiding behind that trap, but he's bombing away. Uh, Griffiths, get out of there. You're going to get in trouble. And, okay, so this is actually a little interesting because he died right as that got blown up. So I think I think Sammy here is going to come up. Our turret should have no problem taking Sammy down. So we'll let our people here really focus on, on them. Uh, Genevieve probably come up to here. And, all right, one down. And now they're going to flee. Very, very good. So you see, that worked pretty well. There was, you know, a lot of blood. Of course, we have to come back in and, you know, fix this up and reset the traps and all that. Might be a smart idea if you do this to put some some doors and some of these so that we have a way of uh, resetting the trap, not standing on traps, so you don't aren't at risk of kind of falling down. Uh, but it works, yeah, it works really nice. Okay, a couple things to notice about this strategy. So one thing is, once you have it, with your little shooting area here for when they break through, it can be really tempting to come and put in, you know, a couple of turrets. You might think, oh, if the turret's like back here, then it'll shoot at them once they come through the wall, but it's not here, so they'll go in path. But that's not right. They're calculating the cost of the path all the way to, say, your bed or something like that. And if there's a turret in the, anywhere in this range, that's going to be added in the cost. So you've got to... Uh, Make sure there are no turrets like anywhere. You have to make sure there's a totally clear path to where they're going to want to go with no turret coverage at all. Now, the second thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, if the your little trap area is too far away, the sappers will path through uh, turret coverage. So if I put like a turret right here and right here, so let's have like the one trap down there at the bottom. I mean, you can kind of close these off. And now let's get a, a sapper to come up to the top. So here we have a sapper right up here and let's see what he does. So he comes on down, you see, he comes right to here and attacks that. And since we don't have any real defenses, this turret isn't even plugged in, that's a disaster. And the reason is because these are just, uh, this is just too far away. And it's worth for him the cost of going through one turret fire than the extra cost of coming all the way down and back up. So that's just one strategy with dealing with sappers, but it seems to work pretty well. And I'm sure that now that you understand how exactly sappers work, that they aim to avoid turrets, whether they're plugged in or not, that they have a slight preference to avoid walls, and that they really don't care about traps 
or bombs. You can think up of some strategies for your own as well. If you do, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you've come up with. And if you have ideas for what else we should do science on, let me know as well. I always love your ideas. Uh, having a great time figuring out what to do with them. But that is going to be it for today. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. I'll see you soon.